Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. I won't do any safeology, uh, partly because I've completely forgotten what I used to do in my previous birth. Uh, and uh, more importantly, as you must have seen over the last half hour, uh, Indian safeology is in much safer hands than it used to be 10 years ago. Uh, I'll speak politics. Uh, I said this election is about the very idea of India. In my constituency, Gurgaon, where I contested, I issued a very special appeal to the voters. Please defeat BJP at any cost. I said, this prime minister is the biggest liar of a prime minister we've ever had in the history of this country. Voters did not listen to me one bit. <laughs> I'm sad, I'm angry, I'm dejected. I want to hold them by their collar and say, you idiots. <laughs> I'm, I want to ask myself, is there any space left for politics in this country? What I've said applies to me, but it also applies to a lot of friends and their reactions over the last three, four days. I think that is fundamentally flawed, this reaction. I almost feel that many of us want to elect a new people. Uh, that, unfortunately, is not how democracies work. I think the fundamental flaw in the way we think is the following, that we conflate consequences with intentions. The consequences of this verdict are disastrous for this country. The intentions that go into the making of it are not diabolical at all. Unless we see this distinction, there's no space for politics. As I said to a friend yesterday, if you don't see this, then go and visa and go out. Then there is no way. The critical thing is to distinguish voters, uh, what the voters are saying, their reasons, their intentions, which they are not saying, but you and I can suss out. The causes, which an ordinary person has no idea of. These are larger historical things that are happening. And finally, the consequences that it leads to. We need to look at these four things separately, not because I'm interested in any academic nuance, but because I want to get my politics right, because I want to discover, is there any space for politics left in this country after 23rd of May? On the reason, you see, the trouble is that I'm so dejected by the consequences that I assume what the intentions must have been. I'm so confident that I know the causes that I don't want to look at the reasons being offered. That's not how you do politics. Reasons. Reasons are very plain and would have been available to us if we had cared to walk out and speak to anyone on the street. They've been there for the last two months for anyone to gather. And to my friends who did not gather that, I can only say, Kis dunya mein rehte ho bhai? The reasons are the following. These are, you know, which is what the actors tell you. Voters tell you why they voted and why the, the way they think. And in a sense, the voter is telling us the following. I, I think the important, uh, a voter is saying, I, I care for this country, I want well-being, strength. I want a strong country. I want a country that I can take pride in. And somehow, I trust this man more than anyone else to bring it about. That's what they are saying fair and square straight away. There cannot be two opinions about it. This is not a question of interpretation. She's also saying, I don't like this negativity about anti-Modi all the time. Can you stop this? She's saying, don't assume that because I belong to this caste, you have my vote in your pocket. 
And she's saying, when I look at your coalitions meant to defend, defeat this man, I'm more frightened by you than I'm frightened by this man. That's what an ordinary voter is telling us. The point to recognize is, and these are hard things to recognize, but I would plead with everyone to please recognize this. Compared to previous elections, this is a hard thing, but please just listen to what I'm saying. Most of the time, in most elections, voters vote in a fairly self-centered way. Mujhe kya milega? Roti, dal, nokri, whatever. Some voters vote in a way that rises above their self. I'm not voting for myself. I'm voting for something big. Strangely, ironically, painfully, this was an election where more people voted selflessly than they voted selfishly. A farmer who has spent the night in the, on the field trying to protect the field from stray animals. And the menace of stray animal is caused directly by Mr. Yogi's government in Uttar Pradesh. That farmer comes in the morning and tells a journalist, vote to Modi ji ko dunga, bada pareshan in janwaron se. He said, what, why? He said, dekho, ye, ye to humari jindagi ki roj marra ki problems hain, ye to humari kisan ki dikkat hai. Lekin ye chunav desh ka chunav hai. So the person rises above the self. This election saw more voting which was ideological in nature. That is to say, beyond my self-interest. More voting which was for national government. Not so much about state government and its calculations. And more voting on the question of Kaun Banega Pradhan Mantri than we have seen in any of the past elections. My colleagues would find out if there's empirical way of identifying these things. I don't know why you people do sephology. Kuch bata dena ya. On intention, so this is the, these are the reasons. In, in, if you go to intentions, there is an anxiety, there is a resentment, and there is an aspiration. Anxiety is about what would happen to this country. Resentment is vis-a-vis -vis minorities in the majority community. That we should not miss out. Even at the level of intention, there is a bit of in a sida karna hai. These are not people who are bloodthirsty, but who feel that kuch jada man bada gaya ta, thoda thik karne ki jarurat hai. That is the sense which informs this. So, uh, this is the intention. In terms of causes, you know, so these are the reasons and this is how the voter is doing what they are doing. At the level of causality come things which are much beyond the voter. An ordinary voter has no sense of, no, no control, no sense of these things. This is your four M's. Modi, money, media, machine. The election machine that the BJP has today, I don't know, Rahul, if any country, in, I mean, any party in the world today has this kind of a machine. I mean, I was saying to a friend, you know, when I appeared for my examination, class 10 examination, class 11 examination, there was no class 12. You read your textbook, and uh, in the evening you felt, I've read my textbook, I'm prepared for examination. So, and I go and appear for examination. This is Congress-style campaigning today, or Samajwadi Party, BSP-style campaigning today. It's nice, good old world. And what has replaced it today? Quota, IIT, coaching, J, this thing. We will say, this is a number of questions. We will not have to do such attempts. Six minutes for this, seven minutes for reading. This is BJP-style electioneering. There is a world of difference. So I would not go into details of it. Media completely captured. And through media, narrative capture. Money, unimaginable scale. I can't even begin to think how much money was spent. Uh, election machine, I've spoken about. And uh, Modi, not so much in terms of person, I mean the Modi cult, but also the sheer will to power. Politics is also in the last instance about will to power. In the opposition parties, you see ambitions colliding against each other. In the BJP, you have all the ambitions which have been synchronized for one purpose, 
That purpose is dangerous for this country. But if you analyze the game of politics, you have to see what's happening. And finally, the consequences. The consequences are that, uh, to my mind, that's something I've written in a long essay today in the Mint, saying that consequences are electoral authoritarianism, namely that elections will happen, notwithstanding whatever Sakshi Maharaj may have said. Elections will happen. But election is the only democratic episode that may happen. Counting will take place fairly, notwithstanding all these things about EVM. But that's the only fair thing that may happen in elections. Concentration of power, decline of autonomous institutions. I am, I have people's confidence. How does anything else matter? Who are you? Judiciary, how do you matter? I have people with me. Judiciary, media, independent institutions. So, I mean, electoral authoritarianism or competitive authoritarianism is not something new. We've known it. Uh, this is broadly Putin. This is, uh, uh, this is happening in Russia. This is happening in Turkey. This is happening in Hungary. Are we about to join it? Second consequence would be uh, a non-theocratic majoritarianism. We shall remain a secular republic. But informally, we would have two gradations of citizenship, Makan Malik and Kirayadar. This is what citizenship bill is all about. This is what we are looking at. Finally, is then there a space for politics? If we were to simply read intentions from consequences, that leaves zero space for politics in this country. Then I said we should take visa, go somewhere else. But if you agree with me, that there is a disjunction between the consequences and intentions and reasons. And in the last instance, uh, you speak to a voter on the basis of their reasons. Then there is a lot of space for creative politics. Space for politics because what drives you would be this, the larger picture of what's happening to India. That's, uh, and in a sense, almost a dismantling of the idea of India. Uh, the possibility that public could be mobilized to, dis to, to, to undo the republic. That's what we are witnessing, public being mobilized to undo the republic. That's my motivation for politics. But that's not how I would do it. I would not go and say, oh, you are destroying the idea of India. You moron, I told you not to vote for this man. Why did you do so? Or to say, oh, I know you are illiterate. I know you are, you are not informed. I know it's just pity. That's not politics. Politics requires that we understand what people were doing and respond creatively to that. To my mind, that would require recovery of three elements. One, nationalism. Nationalism is the currency of politics. And surrendering nationalism can, to my mind, I mean, nothing can be more debilitating in politics, especially in a post-colonial country, than surrendering nationalism. And the deepest irony is that the party which had the sole monopoly of this currency is the one which has been thrown out on that very currency. So nationalism. Second is uh, religion, including Hinduism. I think we've been very, and when I say we, it's a very broad term, left, you know, from that we to this we, uh, from liberal to some kind of left. Uh, I think we've been terribly negligent, indifferent, contemptuous about religions and religious language. That needs to be recovered. And three, culture and language. I mean, in many ways, I really feel Indian elite is like the 19th century Russian elite, which spoke French and often wondered why peasants were doing what they were doing. <laughs> we need to give that up unless we recover these, recover these three things and then speak to ordinary people. The RSS, whatever they may have done, they've worked very hard for 90 years. Can we work for 90 months? 
आर वी प्रिपेयर टू डू दैट सर झुका के गाली खा के नब्बे महीना काम करने को तैयार हैं इफ वी आर देन देर इज ए स्ट्रेंथ दैट वी हैव एंड आई एंड अप एंड विद दैट इट्स ए डायलॉग फ्रॉम दीवार अमिताभ बच्चन से सुशाशी कपूर मेरे पास गाड़ी है बंगला है कार है बैंक बैलेंस पास क्या है शशि कपूर से मेरे पास माँ है सो टू दो मुझे उनकी चिंता नहीं है मुझे चिंता अपनी है टू दो वॉन्ट टू डिफेंड दिस कंट्री दो वॉन्ट टू डिफेंड द आइडिया ऑफ इंडिया आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू से उनके पास सत्ता है उनके पास पैसा है उनके पास मीडिया है हमारे पास क्या है हमारे पास नानक और कबीर की देश की मिट्टी है हमारे पास बाबा साहब का संविधान है हमारे पास महात्मा गांधी है हम जीतेंगे